If you're one of these people that say that your figures look like stick men, then that's a good place to begin. So if we start with a basic uh, stick, let's say that length, and we're going to divide it into half, a quarter, and an eighth, because on the overall length of the figure, that will be represented by the stick, and the top eighth is going to be the shape of the head. So the head is one eighth of the total length. Okay, so if we come down here and try that with a standing figure, we'll place the, the stick where we want the figure, and then we'll go up to a half, a quarter, and an eighth. Now that's just approximate. Don't go taking your rulers out. You don't need to be as precise as that. And if you take that top eighth and just make it into a little oval, like so, and we'll block this in. When I say block in, just shade in as you go. And immediately below the head, we'll go straight into the shoulder width. That's quite important to get the bulk of the figure. So we'll bring that down approximately to the halfway mark, which is quite bulky because we want to do closed figures here. It's mostly the sort of figures that you see walking about in the street. Then bring it further down. And what I do is I incorporate the stick itself into one of the legs and then just bend this leg slightly. So this figure is going to be walking forward. And we mustn't forget the arms as well. We'll maybe have one arm down to elbow like that and the other arm coming down to about there. And one of the very important points of this is that the minute you do that to show the shadow, that helps to give it a bit of bulk. And then you can, by doing this lightly with a colour later on, you'll be able to build up the tonal value, make it slightly heavier, so that that becomes a figure with shading down one side. This time we'll have a little old lady. Make it easy by bending the stick to begin with. So wherever you put her on your painting, that's where you position the stick. Then we'll go halfway up, half again and half again, which is an eighth. And this time we'll just sort of slightly pop the head forward. This is a side view and this will represent her back, which is stooping as she leans across. So we'll have a little bit of a, a hump there. And, and there's a useful shape of figure to have. There's the skirt. Here's the arm coming. And just to show you where the prop is, there's the stick. And again, we can incorporate this back leg with the stick and bring one leg forward slightly. So we're not really trying to, we can fill her out a bit now, we're not really trying to be too detailed or anything. But what's most important is to just include that shadow at the bottom because that's what anchors her to the ground. And this time I'll make this one slightly smaller because I want it to be a little bit further back in scale. But the period's the same, you go half, quarter and an eighth. And we'll put a little bit of movement into this one. We'll maybe have, there's the head, let's have somebody with a hat on. And he's got his overcoat on. So the beauty of filling it in with this shading is that you're not trying to draw the detail. Now we could just come back here and introduce a child just to show you the difference in the proportion. And if we have a child that's going to be attached to this person, and we'll have it totally, say, that height. And this time we'll make the head just about a quarter. Now that looks a little bit big, so we'll make it about a fifth. You know, again, play it by ear. Don't be too guided by exact measurements. Right, now we'll come into the shoulders and not make them quite so wide this time and come down to halfway, maybe for bottom of t-shirt and let's make it a boy, a young boy. And he has we'll just broadened the legs this time. Again, we'll just shade it in a little to get rid of the stick and he's holding on to his mother and maybe an arm here. 
but again, important, link them up and anchor them to the ground, we've got the shadow like that. And that makes a child. Now we might want to make this one slightly larger in scale. So this time I would keep the stick very light and work up the measurements again, but not fill it in this time. And the light's coming in this direction, so put a little arrow. And if we've got the head now, we could actually, whether she's, she might be wearing a hat, let's give her a hat. There we are, and long hair. But this side is in shadow. Just shade it up this side here and here, just to help give a little bit more depth. So without any detail, we're beginning to get the effect of light on one side and dark on the other. Now we're going to be really brave and we're going to go in for colour. And we're going to go straight in with watercolour, no drawing first. And that's not as frightening as it at first sounds, because if you take a pale wash of raw sienna and do the same thing again, just put your line in like that. If you make a mistake and you don't like it, you panic, it's gone. So that's quite easy. You can just put that in, safe in the knowledge you can get rid of it. And then do the same exercise, half, quarter and an eighth. What I'm going to do this time is just tint that colour slightly with a bit of light red so that we've got something similar to a skin tone. And then build up the bulk form of the body coming down. This will be a back view of someone walking. And we could just simply put that bit of shadow in at the moment, just to remind us which direction the light's going to be. While we're waiting on that drying, we'll just do that again and try our, for our bent figure. Let's try that again. Again, that colour, easy enough to get rid of if you don't like what you've done. And just take it, if you want to make it slightly more upright, and run it into the, the head. I'm going to drop the head down more this time. And I'm going to really bend the back and have the arm coming out here. That's where the stick's going to be. And we'll have one leg here and one leg here. And let's just have the shadow the other way for a change. Actually, that one looks now as if it's moving forward. So what I'll do is have that one coming towards us. And I'm going to give it a red jumper and just put some colour into the body now that it's dry. So we'll have a little bit of a, a V-neck there and sleeve, leave a little bit of that space for the, the hand. So if we take that down to there and here. And we'd better give it some hair as well, hadn't we? So we'll put in just a little bit of dark up here. Don't need to be too detailed. Now that I go back to my favourite mixture of light red and ultramarine, I'm actually going to use a little bit of that shadow colour to shape up the, the legs and make a bit of shadow on one side. Because remember, we already indicated that the light was coming in from here. So if we darken that shadow, we're beginning to get a bit of shape down here. And I'm going to just darken that there too. Now let's go back to our old lady. Remember, because she's got a bent back, her dark clothing will come up over the head, down the sleeve, and just leave a little bit exposed at the bottom for her hand. And the whole thing really could be slightly diluted on one side. Let's just lift a bit off there and make it slightly lighter. And then take it across to the darker side. So there's a bit of light and shade going on all at once. So that's slightly lighter on that side than it is at this side. And that gives us a little bit more shape a little bit of shadow on her legs. 
and I'll darken the shadow here. Now that's suddenly made her come alive a bit more. I'll darken the stick too. There we go. That's probably enough actually. We can maybe darken the side of the head. And now you've got the old lady walking up the hill and that's melting into the dark side quite nicely. In oil painting, it's even easier. You've got the facility to put light on dark as well as dark on light. So if we take raw sienna, I've got a bit of white in that. That's the seated figure. There's the back of the chair. We've come away from the stick slightly. We've got the stick bending there. That's where the body changes angle and then the legs come out here. And if we take that again I'm keeping it very thin and very sketchy. I'm treating the paints in the same way as a pencil and sketching lightly and making it slightly fuller here. This is where the elbow will rest on the chair coming across and the legs will be here. Now if I just build that up a little with uh, some colour now and use the white just with a touch of red, a pale pinky colour for a skin tone and I could put that blocked in. This figure's just sitting in the sun so we've got the arm on the chair and the other arm sitting reading. She's got her shorts on Let's have a oh, different colour of top. Just use a bit of dark red or light red, um, but that's okay. A little bit of colour. Some shorts again. There's a good dark colour now coming in, which means we can start to get a little bit more idea of the tonal value and the heads. Got a bit of hair. And the underneath of the chair will also be dark. That'll be dark there and there. But don't forget again those shadows coming in across here. A touch of light red, a little bit of yellow. And we can brighten up the face a little. I want to tilt the head forward slightly, so if I tuck the chin into the body, that would be better. And in fact, we'll just spice that up a bit as well. I'll just use a touch of white to highlight across the shoulder at the back. That's just white going on top, on top of the head here as well. And we want a bit of shadow coming into the skin colour too. So this is in shadow under the chin. The shoulder is in shadow because her head's casting a shadow across. And we'll use a bit of blue on the chair, get the feeling of a, a sun chair. That would be in shadow here. A bit of white to highlight here. Now the knees highlight as well. This knee will be darker because it's in shadow will be a little bit of shaping there. Just to start getting some shading into the legs and a little bit of highlight on the face again and we'll leave it at that. I hope you've enjoyed all these exercises that I've shown you and that they've given you the confidence to get outside and have a go yourself. After all, that's what it's all about. now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.